Okay, this wind just cooked up. Okay, this is Jerry Dymo with How to Get Out of Babylon. And this is just a homesteading 101. How much fire would you need to get through the winter? I've stayed in the Airstream two winters and you need firewood to stay warm. So I, first winter I realized, man, this stuff is like money in the bank. It's gold, especially really good Primo firewood. It's really good. It burns a long time. It burns clean, keeps your stove clean, keeps you from having problems with your stove pipe, like fires. Flu fires are not fun. They can destroy your house. They can explode. They can blow your chimney up. They can do a lot of bad things. They can cause further damage to your home, your domicile, your shelter. Something you don't need, nobody needs. So, okay, so here's a question. How many cords is this? I'm going to kind of, that basket is four feet wide. From length to length, that's four feet. Not quite that deep, but two, when well, that's full of good firewood, like in the back and the front, and the back is not stacked at all clean. It's a bunch of really ugly stuff that I split with a maul, so it's not, it's not, this would be a good piece of firewood. This has got to be split again. Can't get that in the stove. I couldn't even get that in my stove. I, th I could maybe if I had a good bed of coals, maybe, but stop rambling. <laughs> okay, so if there were two good clean rows in here, that would be one rick, and a rick is one-third of a cord. Okay, so that's a rick. That's one-third of a cord. So then we're going to go here. Now, this stuff was all cut too long, cut for boiler, but I need to cut it in half. If I'm going to use it, I cannot get those in the stove at all, period, end of story. Every one of those has got to be cut in half. So I could take a big, light, big bar and cut that in half. Here's my question. From here to here... From that tree to that tree is, I'm going to call it ballpark. Here's a quick and easy way to figure your length. I just had this bamboo. And this is not forest bamboo. It's river bamboo, I found out after many years. Thinking it was forest bamboo. It's not that good. It cracks after a year. One, two, three. See where I have the notches burned into the... Right. Discard it in there. One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight. So that's eight feet. So you go from there to there, right on that one. So that first one. One, two, three, four. Now it's close enough to four feet. It's a little bit longer, but the other ones are not quite that. So we're going to call that 12 feet. And just for make this simple and no no confusion, no arguing, or no 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 you know. Nitpicking. I'm going to stand back here where you can see better. The leaves are going to be noisy, I know. So we're going to call that 12 feet and that 12 feet. And this 12 feet. Okay, class. Did you do your maths? As I say on mine, 3 times 12 is 36, right? No. Yeah, 3 times 12 is 36. If you call it eight foot, you got one, two, three, eight foot sections, and then you have another 12 left over, whatever, <laughs> 24, 36 feet. Okay, so 36 feet. <clears throat> now, you cut that in half, because 36 divided by, your, your cord is eight feet long, four feet wide, four feet high, so these are, he's going for eight. Four feet high, that's good. Got that much correct. So then we have the uh, four foot wide. Now, by cutting them a little long, usually a, a rick is one third of a cord because of 16 inch firewood three times 16. Okay. So, you got 48 wide. So it should be 48 wide. So it should be three ricks. A rick is one third, so three ricks. But this is, we're going to go for two because some of these are a little bit longer. They're not my fault. I didn't do it. I want firewood, not junk. That's junk. Too much of that has come in. Rotted wood, punky wood, bug eating wood. So the nice thing about doing this between the trees is here in Missouri is you don't have as much attraction for snakes. Now, one guy, I was talking to a guy the other day on the phone, and he pointed out that the woodshed, what about the woodshed? I said, well, yeah, there's, there's plenty of room in there, but it's a rock floor. 
they're not going to board into it. They're not going to have any holes in there. So they would have to be living inside the wood and they'd have to nest inside the wood. So I don't think that's going to happen, especially with chickens around, because like I, I'll say it again, what's the difference between a, a baby snake and a big earthworm to a chicken? Nothing. They're both edible and they do. And I don't think copperheads generally tend to hang around where there's chickens because they know that they're going to be able to raise babies. The second the babies get out of the nest, they're going to be, get eaten. So, all right, so we have three times 12, 36 feet of one single stack of wood. And then I have that basket full, and that's the stuff that he did. Why is this important? Well, I had a donation, and one of the things I invested in was a chainsaw, and I paid really good money for it, like real money. Okay, silver. And after the stroke, I it was a pretty heavy chainsaw. That even if I was really in really good shape and healthy, I wouldn't really want to use that much. I really want a smaller, lighter chainsaw, like an electric. Uh, I've heard people doing the uh, blow stuff. Cobalt. Cobalt is a, a good chainsaw. Makita is awesome. My, my sons have Makita stuff. Love to have a Makita because they use two, two batteries, so they go... 18 volt batteries, two of them, that's 36 volts, so they're right at 40 volts. But the cobalt is a really good one. Makita's great, probably the best. A Makita will outcut a brand new Husky gas saw. Wrangler Star proved that. You can see it on video. Cody Crone, Wrangler Star. Okay, so now, so I gotta figure that up. That's, that's what I'm looking at. I'm, so I opted to, I'm, just to help this guy out because his chainsaw was bad. Now I know why, because he didn't treat him right. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm trading the chainsaw for firewood. I'm, am I going to bring that firewood? Probably not. Um, anyway, it's an investment in somebody to use, Bill, Shirley, family, whatever. So I'm investing in this guy who needed the chainsaw, and I'm investing in people to have firewood. Not so much in me. I, that, I wouldn't burn that in all, an entire two or three winters. I know how much I burned. About one box a day, living in there all the time. So, anyway, that's much my point. So it's a kind of homesteading 101. You know, how much can you estimate? How do you estimate? How do you figure how much firewood is a cord of firewood? <clears throat> or if you're going to buy firewood, you need to know. If you're going to sell firewood, you need to know. You need to be honest because you can't say I can put a cord of wood on that trailer because you can't. And that's another thing that's kind of slightly is a is an issue because. You know, a cord of firewood, that trader full of wood is not a cord of wood. It's maybe half, maybe three quarters of a cord. I don't know. I wanted to put one over the fence. I said, put this over the fence. Well, he stacked it instead. I was going to stack it and see how much it was, but he stacked it and it got all messed up. So that, there went my one chance to, and then, well, actually what he did today was, if that was a trailer load, then that is... 12 foot, not even 12 foot. Let me look at that again. Cause I think that hole, I think that was empty there. So that is maybe four by eight and the I don't know, I, I call that about Maybe two thirds of a cord, but nowhere near a cord, which is what I knew. My friend Bill was buying wood from him just to help him out last winter. And I was like, I thought I had ten cords of wood. No, you didn't. The trader does not equal a cord. You can, there's no way you can get a cord of wood on that trailer because a cord is stacked. It's four foot by eight foot by four foot high, stacked. Not just pieces of wood thrown in the trader and call it a cord. So, okay, I'm gonna stop belaboring the point. So, I'll do the math on it and put it down below in the description so I hope my finger wasn't in front of the camera the whole time. <laughs> Alright, this is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you are the remnant. Bye-bye.